Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. The map's coming. I know. When do we start? Welcome back to the show where things are temperate. I love how the, the, the show <laughs> I'm not, is I'm not somewhat death. devolved into the point where we open by talking about the weather. This is like small talk. One, this is oh, like com- this is how you start a conversation with somebody that you don't know how to start a conversation you, with. Singularly, you and I. I've, I don't know if I've ever like retold the story to you because you were there, but I have pointed it out to other people of how you are the, the worst w- small talk. The worst small talk. Like you, I'm fine. Like if things are silent and people are just you know doing their thing, I don't. Really I don't. Care. I don't like silence. You, you don't deal with I, it well. I don't like silence. There was one time we were having lunch with a bunch of people and you picked up a ketchup bottle and started reading the ingredients and was like this this is a low (laughs) that's not good it's not getting worse than this if you're just going like oh high fructose corn syrup didn't know it was in ketchup i thought it was made out of tomatoes (laughs) oh my god i'll be damned I'm fine with silence. You're not. No, that, I can't. That for me is I my. Cannot. That was the low. A man reading to catch up. It prompted conversation, did it not? No, it didn't. Everyone just um, looked at you. We're like, no, that didn't move anything forward. No, I, I enjoyed my time <laughs> reading the ketchup ingredients. It was a Heinz 57 bottle, if memory serves. Do you remember this? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. It, I, it wasn't Hunt's. It was, it was only a couple of years ago. But yeah, was, it was it really only a couple of years ago? Yeah. Then we needed to be hanging out with less boring people at the time, I <laughs> think. Probably three or four years back, yeah. I don't know. I think it's worth mentioning. This, this is full the, send. This is the week where things have started to... It's starting to feel like fall. ...get away from horrible humidity i think uh i think tomorrow is actually supposed to be pretty humid wednesday damn it sorry <laughs> son of a bitch sorry to to do that to you i think we'll get one more just because it's near the end of august doesn't mean that there won't be some sort of heat in september before it really turns into fall but it, it, the last couple of days have had a kind of fall christmas to it i like it yeah i'd, I'd rather have that than you know dying you I, know sitting i want something that's going to prompt me to wear cargo cargo shorts and a hooded sweatshirt and if you go out on a date, you wear Birkenstocks, a plaid blue shirt, I haven't, and shorts. I lost my Birkenstocks. I can't find them. I've not worn Birkenstocks all summer. That used to be Jared's date wear every single time. First date, time for the blue plaid and the Birkenstocks. In my defense, that's really all I own are blue plaid <laughs> shirts. It was always a variation, though. Yeah, it was never the same blue plaid. You'd I was like, like, new blue plaid. I'm like, oh, look, that, that blue plaid shirt looks like it's a shirt I have to have. And I already have like three of a similar ki- kind. Yeah. But I have started to like expand. Oh, good! You've my diversified. Shirt, right? Yeah, I actually have. Thank God, I have a, a green shirt now, and I have a shirt that's purple, which is kind of like blue. And one from my wedding. That's blue. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess that's no one's here to hear about your. It's wardrobe. my power shirt now. We're here to talk about the pop culture news of the week. What happened? Who gives a damn? Like, let's just. Well, we're not going to talk about like what's Jared wearing? WJW. That'd be a great segment. Be a terrible bracelet they also they also have a show called what not to wear so it's very similar (laughs) we're going into the news before we get started does anyone want to get out it's time for the news ready to get fisted iron fisted i'm uh season two i'm gonna be a hard pass on that (laughs) as its first trailer or maybe second i don't even remember this yeah there's a teaser uh remember you were like oh i don't want to have to watch his erectile fistunction (laughs) Oh, yeah, he really did have that issue in, like, the first season of, like, I can't get it glowing. Gonna manually do it. No. But, yeah, trailer happened. What do you think as a guy who watched one or two episodes of that boring, terrible show with I'm a hoping lot of that, boardrooms? I'm hoping that all the, there was more action in the trailer than there was in the episodes that I watched last last time around. Yeah, last time it was a lot of, like, quick cuts. Like, there'd be an action. Like, it was clearly, like, throw a punch, cut, throw a punch, cut, throw a punch, cut. And it was just that, like, quick cutting kind of thing because they didn't plan the scenes out ahead of time, which they did later admit. I also feel like... New showrunner this season. But I feel like from the trailer, I already can gather what the season is going to be about it's going to be a battle for the quote-unquote true iron fist and the hand will be involved somehow the black hand (laughs) or whatever for the guy who's like i never asked for this i'm like bitch you fought a dragon you you did more than ask you punched a dragon into his molten heart and tore his chest open that's not asking that's That's taking that's breaking and entering a dragon's chest that is earning (laughs) yeah that is straight up Putting your flag on that mountaintop and saying, this be mine. And they do do the Iron Fist costume. Looks dumb as hell. Uh, (laughs) Looks real stupid. I wish I could say otherwise because, you know, it's like, 
especially within you know the defenders of verse or wherever this is tangentially falling like with the marvel stuff we have like luke cage jessica jones iron fist and daredevil and daredevil looks so silly because he's the one guy in costume but now they showed the iron fist costume i'm like ah maybe i like i'm hoping that danny's a little <laughs> less whiny but i didn't see that in the trailer maybe just go back to having an open shirt with the tattoo i don't know i just don't want wanny wanny, <laughs> wanny. yeah he's he's real wanny yeah danny and and whiny all in one so wanny <laughs> wanny wand yes yeah yeah i don't really need any more that of wascally his... <laughs> wandy wand <laughs> i don't need any more of his fortune cookie mysticism my god Man hopefully who, it looks better than the first season but that's a low bar that's easy to pass it's like man who run in front of truck get tired is that kind of the speaking and fortune cookie yeah god it was yeah i got so sick of that crap um, man who run behind truck get exhausted it, it looks better but since it's a 13 episode season it shouldn't be that hard to find two minutes of interesting action in 13 episodes so i'm not you know really confident well um, what but was I'm it partially confident what was that i said after the trailer was over i'm like i hope that wasn't all the action from the season in one fell swoop yeah we'll see what happens hopefully it's good it looks better but low bar hey here's some news yes james gunn had a meeting with disney this week i'm guessing he it went didn't right go to the well. offices and they had a meeting to say you're still fired <laughs> so. well at least they met with him <laughs> What is that meeting? Why did you have that meeting? Is it? That's Why like, did you call a guy to go? We're gonna talk about your job. You still don't have it. Is that like going on a date to ghost somebody? Like, hey, let's go out to dinner. Yeah, I'm still not gonna talk to you. <laughs> so I guess this is. It's definitely not the end of this saga because Dave Batista has been very outspoken about it and will continue to be outspoken. And he's, you know, let's put money down now. I doubt he's coming back. He's probably gonna get canned because his immediate reaction was putting it out online thanks dizzy make america great again Ooh, yeah maybe maybe thanos really eliminated him <laughs> he ain't coming back from that snap nope uh we'll see what's happening with this i thought that was so weird that like oh yeah james gunn had a meeting at disney still fired <laughs> what are you doing why have that meeting well they'd be like well at least we met with him and paid him lip service i guess i don't know i mean he's well he'll still get paid that's the thing. Yeah. Like, once you have someone under contract, they're still going to get paid. That's just, they're not going to put that up front. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely been paid for his work on the script. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how directing works, but he definitely got paid for the script. He got well, paid for this movie. If they haven't shot anything yet, then. I don't know how that, I really don't know how that works. I know more of the, like, script end works, but he's yeah. definitely been paid already, at least partially, but. I think Batista will stay if if they don't use guns. I think Batista will stay to try and like follow through on the friendship and the character arc that James Gunn put in. But I think if the script isn't used, I think even if he doesn't quit, I think he'll put up such a stink that they're just like we we don't need this. Yeah, no more Drax. Yeah, hopefully that's not the case because I mean you know you don't just be like and he's gone. Yeah, just. What do you think the chances of the uh, Sean Gunn character being in there are? What's his name? I forgot. Blanken. It's so weird that you get texts on your watch. Isn't it? I don't, I don't like it. It's not for me. It's Well, no, I can't respond. It just isn't. It's a notification. Because it's synced right now. Cause it I mean, I have trouble moving on from a rotary phone, but yeah. <laughs> no, I purposely, me. when I got my Garmin, I didn't get one that I could Wait, is do. that a new one? Yeah, my other one is dead. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. But, you know, the opposite. I like having a watch, and I like having it be a fitness tracker, so I can count my steps, and when I do exercise it's things. It's like having a calculator watch, but in the 2000s. I wonder if I could, get, I bet I could get a calculator app for it. You, you nerd. But yeah, that's the thing, James Gunn. Hey, the internet's angry at Star Wars again. The internet's angry at a lot of things. For, is the new show Star Wars Resistance had its first teaser trailer. Cell shaded graphics looks fine. Not for me. It very and that's where it ends. That for me, that's where it ends. It is very Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, but a lot of people are like it's not. It's not Star Wars. I can't watch this. Then this, don't watch it. Yeah, that's kind of like this is what they do. Like every five years, they do a new show because you're getting a new generation of kids, and that's how this works. Not everything has to be for you. Shut the hell up. It is what they call a gateway drug. <laughs> yeah, first taste free. Yep. Then you gotta watch a man say, "I have the high ground," and you go, "Does that matter?" Then a man gets cut in half. You're Do like, you think it wouldn't matter if his powers were as good as they say? <laughs> you underestimate my new powers. <laughs> Zip. 
I still love that fight. That's a good fight. It's a really good fight. It's probably the best of the lightsaber battles. That Last Jedi stuff was pretty fantastic. Last Okay, Last against, Jedi was pretty against good. Against the guards, because they're not Praetorian guards anymore. I don't know what they're called now. Also, the, the lightsaber duel in the forest was cool from uh, Force Awakens. Uh, I wouldn't put it above the stuff in Episode 3. No. Also, the Phantom Menace lightsaber fight between... Darth Maul, Obi Wan, and Qui Gon isn't bad. No, but it's one of those ones that's been ruined with gifts that just show like how many of those things were cinematic blows and not killing blows. Like if you're just swinging above someone's head, like yeah, there, there were no. It's a very showy fight, but it's not well. A fight. Qui Gon went up over blows. his head and net cost him. Yeah. <laughs> right what, through what the an chest. Idiot. But supposedly one of the largest penises in Hollywood. True story. I mean, it's Liam Neeson. <laughs> he has a very particular set of skills. He fought a wolf with his bare hands. Of course, he's swinging. Wow. Um, like I said, the man has a particular set of skills. Well, so, yeah, so Star Wars Resistance, I think it looks fine. They got Oscar Isaacs in their voice and Poe Dameron. Yeah. I think it's interesting seeing a post-Jedi show. I guess we can't say Jedi anymore because there's no few of them. Post Return of the Jedi show. I think that's interesting. Yep. I'm not going to watch it, but who the hell cares? Let a kid watch it. Enjoy it. Get Have fun. It looks, like, it looks like it's going to be the kind of we follow a young trainee through the process. And it's also it, about shows, teamwork and friendship. And these shows seem, again, from a guy who has watched next to none of them, these shows seem to get dark as the later seasons go on. So I'm sure that's what's going to happen as again. As the kids get older. Who, who cares? I don't. It's not going to affect the movies. It's going to be a fun show for kids. If you don't like it, you know. Piss off. Yeah, kind of. Watchmen has been officially greenlit with HBO. And they did do one teaser image with the Watchmen uh, font that just says, nothing ever ends. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was Dr. Manhattan just walking around with his blue dong. <laughs> Speaking of things swinging. Yeah, maybe Dr. Manhattan <laughs> is... Uh, He's back into. Sure. Would it kill him to put on some pants? I mean, he did in the book to help appease the government you'd know that if you read it closer uh you know you're right <laughs> i shouldn't have given you that book that was too much too soon yeah that was... Was, there was just watchman news that week so i tried to follow we were, up on it we and... were young and we didn't know any better i should have known it's my own fault but yeah watchman sequel has been greenlit sure hbo i mean i don't know how i'm gonna get to watch it because i don't have hbo like i don't know if i trust it enough to you know purchase it after the fact i guess i can't that's, that's what i'm gonna have to wait to hear can't you the can't you um on. with amazon can't you get hbo streaming you can for an extra couple bucks a month i think uh i guess that would depend on how much it costs yeah but i think that's a thing we'll see Hey, you remember that there's a Spider-Man movie coming this December that looks good? Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah, I think it looks interesting. Isn't there, there's a Spider-Man video game coming out, too. There, There is, for a PS4, written by uh, Chris Doss Gage. And for, hey, you Buffy listeners of that other show, he's been the main scripter over there. He's also done work on The Amazing Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man. Guy who inexplicably responds to every stupid-ass tweet I send to him. But yes, so there is. A, I think that game looks good. It makes me wish I had a PS4, but I don't. So that's fine. I do. So you get it. You play it. I might. With, I, th with... I thought about doing like kind of let's play things for the store with us, but I was like, yeah, um, that sounds like more effort. That would be a vi a editing an extra video that I don't want to do. Uh, just us playing video games? Yeah. Oh. And <laughs> just yelling at them because we don't have the patience of, you know, 90s us anymore. No, we <laughs> don't. Oh, which we reminds me, to... I've got a couple of PS3 games that if you want, I have like an N a couple of NBA games. Once the year passes, who cares anymore? Uh, Unless it's like Tecmo Super Bowl. No I also have, cares. have you ever played Borderlands? No, I had I, a, my roommate did. I have Borderlands, I have Dead Red Redemption. Yeah, they're getting a sequel to that. So, uh, so oh, anyway, so about this End of the Spider-Verse movie, Just, don't let me forget Nicolas it, Cage, who is doing Spider-Man Noir. Yes says he's going to be channeling Humphrey Bogart for the character since it's supposed to be like a... Ah, oh, there you go. You know, 1930s character. Yeah, like Casablanca. Oh, that sounds... Here's looking at you, J. Jonah Jameson. It sounds terrible, but I mean, it sounds so Nicolas Cage. I'm like... Who, who is he supposed to be? He's playing Spider-Man Noir, who is a Spider-Man, you know, from the Noir kind of era, like oh, the 1930s, okay. so he's going to be pulling that. Here's mistake. looking at you, Mary Jane. You're just saying things. You're not really doing an impression. Nope, I'm not. I'm not going to sully the good <laughs> name of Humphrey Bogart. It's like, I know, you need to channel Nicolas Cage, and then you need to channel Humphrey Bogart doing Nicolas Cage to be like, oh, that was more Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Here's looking at you, Spider Man. Oh, it's gonna be terrible. That's that was god awful. That was <laughs> what do you want from me, man? I'm trying to do an impression you're, into an impression. You're no Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I will give you that. Um, 
Yeah, because you know what? When I have a child, or if I have a child, more specifically, <laughs> I'm not going to name them Cal L. Then you're not going to give birth. Have your wife give birth to the last son of Krypton? You're not going. That's what he named his kid. Yeah, I know that. I was, I was down in New Orleans like right after uh, the IRS came after him, and <laughs> I was like, "That's Nicholas Cage's old house," and like every restaurant's a signed photo with him just because he's you know lived down there. Hmm. Anywho, but yeah, Nicholas Cage trailing Humphrey Bogart sounds awful, but amazing. Well, only one way to find out. That movie looks interesting. So Red box hit. It. We're seeing that in theaters. We are. We're seeing four more movies this year. That's one of the four. Oh wow, four movies in four months left isn't there yeah but it's not space that way we're, oh. we're gonna do like in, yeah into the spider-verse aquaman venom and another one i don't remember oh that's helpful one of them one of those movies that are coming out we're seeing it though why don't i get to pick a movie ever look i didn't i cut out so many movies i'm like that's too many movies just, and just I just, because the last comics, movie i it's... picked was a message from space <laughs> Oh, I got a movie coming up that we're going to watch. Speaking of said movie. Oh, boy. Deadpool 2, when it was still a Tim Miller production, was going to have cameos, which I think we brought up before mm. in news. Uh, they were going to have, like, uh, Chris Evans was going to come back as Johnny Storm, but they were also going to have the Fantastic Four from that last terrible movie, which we might be watching on the original release date of Dark Phoenix. Oh. Just to rem- as a reminder of how much Fox sucks at this. I think you'll at least find it funny how bad it is. But yeah, so the Fantastic Four from that last series were supposed to cameo in Deadpool 2 as Deadpool is assembling his team. And there was concept art released of what they would look like. Looks good! That would have been fun. I liked it. They actually had costumes. There's this weird reference of like Johnny Storm's red 1970s costume that he had for a relatively short period of time. I think that's when Len Lee was writing it, if memory serves. But, I mean, they had the Giant Storm red costume. They actually had, like, real uniforms with the four on it. The thing looked like the thing versus... A stone penis? He doesn't have a penis. That's the problem. He doesn't have pants, and he has no dick. That's in the movie. Dr. He just, Manhattan, he doesn't he wear not. Pants. Yeah, he doesn't wear pants, and there's nothing there. There's been a lot of swing and dong talk in this show, and I don't like it. What do you like want from me? You brought it up. I not did not me. bring it up. This one you did. All right, that's one out of three. But you are sixty-six percent <laughs> penis tonight. <laughs> but it looks it, they looked good. I liked the concept art. I thought that would have been a fun. Th- I mean, cra- you get Brad Pitt to do a cameo, but you can't get the Fantastic Four to do a thing just as a quick gag. That would have been fun. It would have. But what are you gonna do? The concept art looks great, but it didn't happen. Hey, speaking of that other show that I do, I need to record one of those right after this. Oh, wow. Busy night for you. Yeah, that's of, why you're kind of oh, pushing this one along a little bit. I just thought I had energy. Oh, that too. But I had positive energy. Maybe it's just a new feeling for me to see that coming from that side of the <laughs> Positivity. couch. Yeah. <laughs> this grumpy Zach's, bastard. Zach's upbeat tonight. I don't know what's gotten into him. Uh, this came out of nowhere, which makes a lot of sense. The Buffy license has been pulled from Dark Horse, who has had it for over 20 years. End of that story. <laughs> Thanks that for reacting. That can't possibly be good. I mean, this for a while, the stories that they were doing weren't canon, and they're not very good, but they've been doing in-canon stories. I'm throwing that in air quotes because it's a potential at this point. For the last 11 years, Fox took it back. I don't know why Fox even bothered at this point because... Movie? The, a remake, perhaps? The, I mean, the show, but that's all going to get absorbed by Disney, so why do they care? Like, they literally pulled it and said, you have four issues to wrap everything up. Because I was like, why is this last season so short? Because they said, this is your time frame, deal with it. Maybe maybe Disney wants to explore that, and they're like, we're going to be able to... They might expand it, but what's even weirder about it is they said at the beginning of this season, which is the final season, they were like, oh, you know, after this, we're going to continue to publish things, but not in season format, which just turned out to be a lie. Why say that? Why say you're going to do stuff when you know you can't? What, what is that? I, I don't know. Um... That was just a dumb... It's like, okay, great. You knew the license was being pulled, but then you said, we're going to continue to do things... Except that was never on the table. What a weird, dumb lie. I just felt like bringing that up. How do you really feel? Now we go. Grumpy Zack is back, yeah, baby. That son of a bitch. Old Man Logan. That series is ending. But you know what's coming out of it? New. Oh, the opposite of new. Dead Man Logan. It'll be a 12-part story, I guess, about how this old man dies a slow death. Who the hell knows? We had a movie like that. Oh, but he died with his heart in his hand, just like it was predicted in The Wolverine. True, true. You didn't see that movie. You should, though, because it's really good. He throws ninjas into a snowblower. That's also where he, like, covers up a bunker during a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's there at Nagasaki. Yeah. That's a good movie. Like, I'll watch that with you. Not for the show. I'm just happy to watch that movie. It's a good movie. I like it a lot. He's got the bony claws and not the adamantium claws. Yeah. 
a couple of times. I'm, yeah, not for the show. I'll just watch that movie with you. Be like, let's watch a film. Let's watch a good film. Sometimes we do that. On occasion. We did it more when I was single. Yeah, and we lived 30 feet from each other. <laughs> yeah. I was like, come over. We're watching Mad Max and the Three Stooges. But Zach, Why? Because we can. But Zach, it's Christmas. Well, we have nothing else going on. Fair <laughs> point. Uh, I can't do that anymore. Come have actually, some. Actually, I spent last Christmas with you. I can't even say that. It's true. <laughs> I literally spent my last Christmas with you. Hey, you've seen Infinity War. I have. You know what's in the Infinity War? The The Black Order. Yes. I was going to say the Infinity Gauntlet. (laughs) That's in there too. Thanos. But the Black Order. A lot of ashy people. Is going to get their own series, Cosmic Marvel style. Ooh. Opa Cosmic style. Give me some Proxima Midnight. Good poll. Thank you. You remembered a thing. I did. Some of them are dead, though, so we'll see who the Black Order is. About half of them, probably. Honestly, I don't even know. I, I, yeah, we're going to talk about a story. Why not? We'll do it right now. Carnage is getting a one-shot spinning out of the Venom series called Carnage Born. It's like, Carnage is dead. I'm like, when? When did that happen? I don't even remember. He's. I guess he's been dead for a little while. He had an ongoing series. Now I guess he's dead. Don't know when it happened, but he's coming back. Good for him. As, as jokingly as I'm talking about the series, the series is going to be written by Donny Cates and... He's a hot commodity right now. Everything he puts out ends up selling like crazy and then does really good business on the secondary market. Like hot cakes. Oh, yeah. Donny Cates is hot cakes. See what I did there? Hot cakes. Way to pick it up. Yeah. Picking yeah. up what I'm putting down, baby. <laughs> I got there. But yeah, so I guess pick up Carnage Born. It's a one shot because I guess he's dead. But literally everything this guy does sells insanely well. Stan Lee, the ongoing saga. Oh, yes. Or some sort of restraining order or something. That's. Did you just read my notes? Or I, did, I did. Okay, so that's what you found. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be straightforward and forthright. Uh, the guy who said, or the guy Stan said was managing him, Kia Morgan, who we've brought up on the show, there has now been restraining orders filed against him, and he put up some dumb crap on Twitter that's like, the news will bury you with falsehoods. Like, bitch, you were stealing from an old man. Do you remember that weird story that came up where I was like, there were armed gunmen who were trying to like go at Stan? That was just a false police report. Those were literally just cops who came to his house. Wow. To do a wellness check. Yeah, that was it. And he's like, armed gunmen came to Stan. Well, police technically are armed gunmen. He's a weird psycho. As opposed to a normal psycho. My favorite thing, though, is because he is one of these um, attention celebrity whores. Like, he wants to brush shoulders with everything. And I was so happy when I looked up his Twitter to see that he didn't have a blue verification mark. And just knowing how much that must goad him. A ton. Like, I'm I'm important, too! He's the guy who knows the guys. Uh, yeah, he, he seems to be a dumb bastard. And That's like giving I'm... you a blue, <laughs> blue verification mark for, like, being retweeted by famous people. I don't care that's the that's the difference i mean yeah but still i could one i shouldn't be verified because i'm nowhere but if even if i what i don't care no you should be certified <laughs> should be institutionalized that's also right. very and, yeah there you go but yeah so kia morgan there's been a restraining order put against him you know what i'm gonna put on this show an addendum because he's such an attention whore we will no longer do kia morgan news on this show because his name shouldn't be mentioned. So I believe it's not faith. an addendum. I think you're, the word you're looking for is moratorium. Both. Adding a thing and killing a thing. The Fantastic Four. They're back. We talked about them already this show. Oh, I'm bringing them up in comic form. Okay. They're going to All have... All four of them? Yes. Okay. New villains that are going to be living in the Baxter building that Peter Parker lost. Way to go, Pete. <laughs> How do you lose somebody like that in a building? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Fantastic Four guys. Just dropped a couple of villains off. Uh, they might be in a broom closet. Not they're, really sure where they are. Their new villains are going to be called the Fantastics. Or are they villains? They are four characters with similar powers to the four. I'd like to see. I don't like have an, a lot to like say an, beyond that. I'm like, all right, cool. What about like an opposite? Like, you know, instead of the human torch, like the human water. I mean. The human fire. H- hey, there were plenty of issues of strange tales where he had to fight Iceman. Or Plant Man who just doused him with <laughs> dew. <laughs> with a morning dew. Stupid plant. Got him. Plant Man is an idiot. I love Plant Man. Plant Man can suck on some bark. <laughs> he can suck on some morning dew. I'm sure he would, that Plant Man. He can make trees box. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the first. If I had a fantastic power that like I could control plants, the first thing I would do I'm gonna make would one not of be fight. Like I have a plant fight. I'm going to make one of them pick a lock and then another two trees they can box. But yeah, so the Fantastics. 
Uh, right now, I mean, we'll see, because issue two is not yet, but for right now, fan- I'll be really curious to see the sales figures for next month, because Fantastic Four is one of my most pulled issues right now. There's only one issue out, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, for me at least, it's doing, like, Spider-Man numbers. Ooh, those are big numbers. Yeah. Iron Heart is getting her own comic. She replaced Iron Man with in, within the Iron Man book, Riri Williams. We'll see. Gotta, gotta let her spread her wings. See what's I, up. I, I mean, I don't really know... Uh, the thing is, is I want the book to succeed, not even from a financial standpoint, but so many people railed on this book who were like, this is just SJW Marvel, like replacing our heroes with, I mean, that's literally like a teenage black woman. And so many people were so crappy about it. I want this book to succeed just to, you know, to put to people in their place. Essentially. Shut up the haters. Yeah, shut the hell up. We'll see. I mean, It was Bendis who was doing it. Oh, uh, then you know it's going to be a success. Well, I mean, now he's at a different company, but he, he was doing it at the time. It wasn't great. If it fails, it's because they got rid of Bendis. It wasn't very good. Not because of the characterization, just Bendis was clearly phoning in a lot of books. Yeah, on his point. way out. I mean, he was doing Iron Man right then, and that was kind of crappy. And he was doing Guardians, and that was crappy. And he was doing a different Iron Man book with Doctor Doom, which I did like. But most of and his Jessica Jones book was still good. But about, uh, he was doing a lot of books, and most of them weren't very good. Okay. Including this one with Ironheart, Riri Williams. I hope the book does well, just because I want... <laughs> You know, these whiny bastards who are complaining about how, you know, it's not the way it used to be get kind of shut down. But... It's a modern world, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Just, I guess, pre-order this book to shut assholes up. I like it. I like where your head's at. That's where I want it to be. Take that and, and su- put that in your pipe and smoke it. It'd also be interesting to see the character in her own title. I mean, the character was literally just falling up in the Iron Man title because she kind of created her own armor and all that stuff. But seeing the character spread out in a different way, I think, could be interesting. And I hope it is. I mean, realistically, in the next five years, I bet we're going to see a lot of these characters that were getting cycled in for the first time replacing the uh, ones that we see in the live action stuff. Like, we've now seen, there have been other Captain Americas, there have been other Thors, there have been other Iron Man characters. I would bet within five years, we're going to see Riri, Riri Williams on the big screen, replacing... Downey. I mean, right now Downey just has to show up, get green screen for five minutes and leave, but there is going to be a point where he's going to be A, too expensive. He probably already is. And too old. Yeah. But the other thing I like, too, is at some point, like, Tony Stark, his character's arc has to run, and there's no, nowhere else you can really explore. I mean, you could, and they did this within the uh, previous Riri Williams run, he can become the new Jarvis. He can just be the AI. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's an easy gig. You show up for half an hour's worth of work, you get a few million out of it, you leave. Yeah. That sounds pretty sweet. I would be all I, in. I bet I, that's where this is going. So yeah. I show up for an hour every every week and get nothing. Oh, I've been starting to get mac and cheese again. So <laughs> you're you're back on the cheese, the bu- carbs the, and cheese. The budget's been reopened up a little bit here for the show. But yeah, so I, I don't know. Pick this book up. At least try it out because that's also uh, this is becoming a weirdly long story that I meant it to be. There is a definite trap within comics of things like kind of post 1989. Like people have a lot of trouble accepting new things. And they they get really stuck in that nostalgia thing. Like oh this is the character I've known forever and it's really hard for new characters to break out in a big way. Change isn't always bad. Do this. Try try this book out. Try seeing a new character do a new different thing. You don't always have to fall back on the laurels of like, but oh, Zach, I remember this thing when I was five. But Zach, it's Iron Man. <laughs> well, this is Iron Heart. Fair enough. Which I guess is better than an iron lung. That sounds terrible. It sounds like polio to me. Uh, that turned into a longer story than I meant it to be. Kelly Marie Tran. I should have had you read this. Oh. She put out an essay in the New York Times talking about, on because she had deleted her Instagram. And yeah, because of, media generally, yeah, of, because of the over-the-top idiot Star Wars fans. Yeah. It is depressing, but also uplifting. Oh. It's, I mean, it's real, it's real sad. Like, reading through, like, her reaction to the harassment and, like, how this gets tied into her own personal worth, but then also kind of coming out and being like, you know, this isn't a direct quote, but bitch, I'm a do me. That's fine. And I'm going to yeah. do it strong. Go for it. I'm and, all in on that. Well, and the other, cause I mean, we get this all the time with Hollywood of like people of 
different descents like end up having to like americanize their names people who aren't white yeah she came out say it. well she came out with her real name which i honestly i never knew and with uh, with most of these people i don't really know like i don't think like i wonder what their birth name was and i'm hoping i'm not gonna massacre the pronunciation but i think it's um loan spelled like lone but i think pronounced loan from what i saw online that's a cool name yeah and she said like this is who i am and I'm just getting started. And she's in one of the biggest franchises of all time. Don't harass people. Like, especially within comics, there's a relatively, I'm sure some people will connect these dots. There's a relatively prominent comics artist whose books I don't hold in the store unless you ask for them because it's all this dog whistle bullshit about trying to harass this woman. We're like, no, we're really supporting her. But it's, just, it's all just assholes. And I hate it. Wagging the dog. Oh, it's like the most blatant dog whistle crap. Ugh. Yeah, I don't. I don't really want to give them any time or space on this show, but I don't carry their books. Like, despite their prominence, I, I don't do it. Be- yeah. Because the guy's an asshole, and I don't want to give him money. There you go. It's pretty straightforward. Because don't harass people online. And, don't harass people, period. Oh, yeah. And let's, I don't like... Let's simplify the matter. Don't be a jerk. Well, the funny thing about at least her character in Star Wars, again, not the person, but the character, I didn't like everything the character did. But what's funny is I like the character. Yeah. I think uh, she gave a good performance, and I like the character. I thought going to Canto Bite was the weaker of the stories that happened. I don't like the thing that she did. That, the the, the yeah. whole, even like the whole casino scene, that was very much too CGI. It felt very prequely to yeah, me. It but then it's the oh look what we can look, look what ILM can do kind of thing. The thing at the end where she's like, where she uh, makes Finn not sacrifice himself. She's like, we're gonna win by you know protecting the things that we love over killing the things that we hate or whatever that was. I'm like, yeah, that's what he was doing. That's what he was doing, and he stopped him. Yeah, that's not her fault. That's that's just the script though. Yeah, that's not the script told her to <laughs> stop him. Yeah. What's funny is I like her enough that I really want to see that character move on. Yeah. I like the performance enough and what she was doing with it, but I don't like everything the character did, but that doesn't mean I'm going to like scream at someone on the internet and be like, I don't like, and you're the worst because that's stupid. Don't, don't be that person. That's a dumb person. That's a dumb person with too much time on their hands. Mm. If you're not going to put out something positive, don't bother doing it. I know that's an old adage, but it's kind of true. Yeah. Don't be someone's crazy uncle. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Especially in a world where everything that you say on the internet is recorded forever. That's probably why you don't say a lot. That's why you were quiet during that awkward situation where I started to read a ketchup bottle. Maybe you didn't have anything nice to say. (laughs) Uh, What else we got? Wolverine. Speaking of not saying anything bad, Wolverine's new costume has been revealed. Looks dumb. Yeah. Do not like it. No. It no. looks really stupid. I don't like it at all. It's so trendy. It's so trendy. I'm surprised it didn't have a higher collar popped on it. Like, that was the one thing it was missing. Woof. Looks dumb as hell. Yeah, not doing it for me. Yeah, I don't like it. No, thanks. The funny thing about, like, the character of Wolverine, how he's, like, kind of evolved to a point, I'm like, he's also a character I just don't see wearing a costume at this point. Yeah, especially one like that. Or really, like, the one that he has, like, I mean, it's been brought up in the comics kind of, like, at face value that he doesn't he kind of hates his own costume but that he wears it because he's supposed to because he's a superhero Mm. i don't like this new one though but you know maybe it'll grow on me it probably won't and it'll probably go away marvel knights doing a lot of news this week yeah news heavy week the topic the main topic of this whole thing is actually the start of marvel knights so it's very apropos knights with a k yes Marvel Knights was a series uh, 20 years ago that was kind of like the edgier Marvel, and it was the Marvel that like... Oh, look at us for being so well, more subver- like subversive. The heads of Marvel kind of like would take their hands away, and they could kind of do their you know darker stories and you know really punch things up. And they're having their 20-year anniversary, which uh, we've talked about before, but it was kind of sounded like it was going to be another line again. But what it's going to be is a six-issue miniseries reintroducing, or not reintroducing, but reusing a lot of the characters from the Marvel Knights line before that, yeah. again... Guy we mentioned before, Hot Cakes Donny Cates is going to be leading as a, in parentheses, Donny Hot runner. Cakes. That's what you should call him. Donny Hot Cakes. Yeah, don't tweet at him. Don't, uh, don't, please don't tweet that at him. No, I, I choose not to. <laughs> I choose to rise above that. Hashtag. And the last bit of news, sad news, but I will, I mean, it's not good. It could turn into something good, but in the immediate, it's not. Danny Boyle has left James Bond number 25 due to. That old Hollywood goody, say it with me now, creative differences. You didn't say it with me. I thought you were going to say sexual harassment. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) You're right, though. That's a thing now. Uh, No, creative differences. 
I love Danny Boyle as a director, and I thought he was a good pick for Bond, but yeah, apparently he's out. Creative differences. <laughs> Sexual harassment. That's not a joke. No, 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 no. Creative no. differences, I can laugh at that. Yeah. Well, that, show, that shows that you're okay as a person. <laughs> yes. I'll laugh at one and not the other. Just because I don't enjoy, like, overposting of animals on Facebook. Actually... <laughs> That was a, that was a well crafted Instagram post. Oh, I appreciated like that? that. Yeah, I mean, for, I also put it on my Twitter, but I threw, yeah, I threw a thing up on Instagram, my personal one that is hidden from the public, so you can't see it. But it was like Jared Richmond thinks that I post too many dog photos. I don't agree with him, but he's still a decent guy, and that's how friendship works. That's true. <laughs> More importantly, I have it in writing that you called me a decent guy. <laughs> oh, good. I screenshotted the shit out of that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Danny Boyle's out. That's a bummer. We'll see who comes in next. I'm sure it's going to be like some gun for hire with no real vision. Woo! I, I don't have anything to add to that. Well, you better have something to add to this next bit because it's mostly on you. It's time for Jared Sports Reports. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared Sports Report. Ah, oh, well, there are sports ball things happening. We're yes. halfway halfway through the NFL preseason, and the Patriots are Oh, I can tell because you were tweeting about it endlessly. That's the first time I was able to sit down and watch the whole game. But the uh, preseason game number three coming up, and of course, that's the that's the big one. That's where the players or the, the stars usually play about three quarters of the game. Tom Brady looked pretty good through two touchdowns in his first action uh, of the season as the Patriots uh, got a nice win at home against the Eagles in a rematch of the Super Bowl, which totally tangential piece here, but people were like, oh, it's a revenge statement game. No, it wasn't. Look it was a preseason. It was a preseason game where the starters only played for a half at most. So, you know, it's funny about go pound sand. This, re- speaking of swinging, um, <laughs> the, these reports. When you started doing this, you kept it real broad, but as it's gone on, you're like, I don't care. Here's what's happening in New England. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's what's happened to these. Because well, when you started this, you're like... A couple weeks ago, there were pictures of LeBron James wearing a Lakers jersey that uh, filtered out as he uh, started to do that, if that makes you it, feel any better. It's going to be 23, is that what I saw? Mm-hmm. Kobe's number. No, Kobe was eight, and then he was... Kobe was, didn't take 23. Was he, was he never not eight? I think he was always eight. Oh, maybe he turned it. I can't remember. Because he, he was there forever. Who was there? Like 11 seasons? Uh, longer than that, I think. But Boston Red Sox, they are at, they're going to break 90 wins before the end of the month of August. One of the better teams. if not, they, They're on pace to set the all-time season wins record for uh, Boston Red Sox team. So they haven't won. So they could try and catch up to the Yankees. Oh, it's not because we well, we talked about that before of who has the most. And oh, we're Boston about... was far, far away. Oh yeah, the, I mean the Reds, the New York Yankees have like twenty six, twenty seven World Championships to like Boston's five or six or something. I don't. Regardless, um, so the Red Sox are are rolling. Still some bullpen issues to iron out. Chris Sale's on the disabled list, so that? he's a pitcher. Okay, it's the second time he's been on the fifteen day DL with uh, shoulder and arm inflammation and soreness shut him down until october he doesn't need to throw another pitch in september rest him up rest him up you guys should be able to, they should be able to cruise in to a division win i'm trying to think of other exciting sports news celtics news oh okay well well it's it's kind of not news but it is news does it involve a porn star no that's usually what you bring to this conversation no, it's Kyrie. oh yeah man who they ever since he signed they've been talking about like where will he go next because it was only a two-year contract came out and this is incredibly vague that danny ainge and Kyrie have and this is the in quotes part an understanding about long-term plans so that can mean what does that mean that means nothing that and is everything that is we don't know what's happening that's what that's term for that i mean that could mean that he wants to stay on long term there's a lot of talks about him going to the knicks but that could also mean that he wants to stay in Boston for the right amount of money when he goes into free agency. I, I think that it's Boston first, and if the money's not there, he'll go elsewhere. Yeah, there's talk of I, New York, Philadelphia. The 76ers would use him. Knicks seem to be the biggie. So here's the thought that I've been having. Cause, okay. Um, who do you think the fifth? Who's going to be the starting center this year? It's going to be Baines or Horford? Or is, uh, my thought is Baines will start, but will be quickly replaced by Horford within I, the first I, five minutes. I think so. Yeah, I think especially with what they did to restructure for Baines and Horford. You know, Horford had to play it. I mean, he's going to he's going to have the tip off. I think Baines has the advantage on the tip off, and that's why they'll have. Well, Baines not only that, think about the the number of minutes that Horford played down the stretch of the season. You know, balance his minutes and manage them early in the season too. I mean, so because I can, I mean, guarantee the first starter is going to be you know. 
Kyrie, Gordon Hayward, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. But the center is the one where I'm like, is it going to be Baines or Horford? I think you start Baines and Horford comes in off the bench. That would be my guess. But I mean, that's still. I mean, Horford's a better player. That's Baines still a ways away. Off. Yeah. It's not that far away. We're less, like two months. Two less, months. Less is, than. It's two months is two months, dude. This is my. Th- I don't have other sports. Yeah, I know. I just like basketball. I don't know what happens in the rest of the sporting world. That's fine. Anyway, that's really it for sports reports at the moment. Now, what I want is a conjunct a uh, construction junction. What's your function update? <laughs> I was say, conjunctivitis. Nope, don't want that. Sure, I guess we can do that. Can you dig it? What's the state of the construction update? See you later, new Doug. Sucks and I hate it. It's All getting right. it's getting better. They're closing in on being done for the. Uh, We're still like three months away. Oh wow! Speaking of things that are basketball's two months away, construction is three months away. Well, they're paving downtown. They're doing some paving. They're doing right? the first round of paving, oh, okay. which there is some confusion about. Ah, well, please clarify. When they say they're going to be paving in the spring, that's just additional capping. They they're putting down their primary paving now, but there's been you know some reports out there that were like, oh, paving will happen in the. Sp- spring of next year people were like in the spring but how will i drive down there i'm like well that's just a poorly written article and you know there's actually tar on there now oh excellent. so come and drive on through there's additional parking lots open there's parking on my side of the street would you call it hot top no some people call it hot top the hell is that pavement okay tar okay asphalt it, it's down oh there's a load of ass down already through no fault of anybody <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's the same crap. It sucks. I can't wait for it to be done. All right. That's fair. Businesses are going under. No one's paying themselves. It all it all sucks. Shop local because, boy, it sucks. Bear down. Stay the course. Keep the faith, Zach. I mean, some people are under. A lot of businesses have gone down because of this. The wharf was underwater once. Not too long ago. <laughs> that was a different Oh, thing. okay. Sorry about that. There's several cars ah. on several cars on, on uh, Water Street, Front Street as well. Yeah, that, they, they were gone. Yeah. Cool. From there, I guess, from that update of depression, let's move on to a happier topic. Jared's reading quarter. Kevin Smithathon continues round two, baby. It's Jared's reading corner. You are you're generally I'm trying, I, man. I get it. See, I'm sorry. Got to engage the audience. I'm keep, sorry. Keep them coming back for more. Start reading a ketchup label. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, just, just bring one of those down. Like, Five grams of sugar. They add sugar to everything. That's not a conversation starter. The new segment on the show. Jared reads. Con- Jared reads the uh, ingredients labels. Name the condiment based on the ingredients list. Boo! Instead, let's read Daredevil: The Man Without Fear, the start of the Marvel Knights line, written by Kevin Smith with art by Joe Casada who for a time was Marvel's editor-in-chief right now. I think they have him as CCO, Chief Creative Officer. Uh, by the way, were you aware there were two jackets on this book? What the hell? Yeah. Are they the same? They're the same jacket. I've had this book for years. Yeah. Th- this is from my private stock. There's Where the hell did that? No, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know, know that I, was, I had two I was sitting jackets. on the can the other day reading it. and I Fantastic. Well, you know, I, I was engrossed. Ugh, it just sounds gross. Well, I mean, everybody does it, Zach. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't have a bathroom reader. You're not a bathroom reader? No. I actually I used to get so annoyed at m- my dad because I would like I'd buy books and I'd read and be like, oh, can I read that? And then like he'd take it and it always ended up being a bathroom reader. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like, stop bringing it into the can. It's not like I wiped with it or anything. Thanks. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Yeah, Daredevil, we get to Kevin Smith run here. Uh, I think it was six or seven. I think eight. S- or was it eight? It was eight. Oh, they, I opened right up to the word cacophonous, like I said earlier. <laughs> Somehow it found its way in. He likes that word in his comics. He does. No, and this story arc was called Devil, uh, no, Guardian Devil. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> you looked at me like you were looking for affirmation. Yeah. Like, did I do it? Did I do it right? I got it right. This is, yeah, Kevin Smith's first attempt at superhero books. I think he had written some like Clark's comics before, but this was the first dive into superhero books. And for what we've read, I would say this is his second best. Yeah, I thought I it was the really Batman good. sixty six one. I think is the best, but yeah. I think this comes in second place. I have. It was interesting because as I was reading it, there was stuff that had happened that I wasn't aware of. 
like in the Daredevil universe. This is the first Daredevil I've ever, ever read. There's, I mean, Daredevil is kind of, it's an, like, it walks this weird line of being kind of B-list Marvel, but then there's also some stuff that's just like high prestige, like this is some of the best we've ever done. Like some of my favorite books of all time Yeah, come down to the, especially the Frank Miller run, which of course everyone knows and loves. Oh yeah, can we talk about the fact that he had uh, the, his um, partner, Foggy, Foggy had sex with a demon? Well, it, allegedly. Not? Anyway. I mean, two dust jackets, demon sex. I really never knew that. Yeah. What the hell? I've This is from my, you know, personal stash. And yeah, I didn't know that well, was there. There you go. Anyway. I bought this like more than 10 years ago. Well, I, I was like sitting there reading and like the... Sorry, I'm just weirded out by that. Yeah. That, that it has two jackets or I was on the can reading the book. Double the jackets for the price of one. But as I was reading it, like the, the jacket seemed wider than the book. I'm like, that's weird. And then I like put two and two together. Look, quick gist of the book, Daredevil is Daredevil and about uh, his old flame slash assistant Karen Page comes back into his life. Well, it starts It starts out... She you're, thinks she has AIDS. Well, you're missing a key component. There's a baby which is delivered to Daredevil by this woman who's like... Damien style. Yeah. What? The Omen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> totally threw me off guard. I was thinking of... Not that da- Damien. Okay, not you. the Damien that we know in real life. Um, <laughs> I, I meant the cinematic Damien. But this young girl is like being chased down, it's and like, who names your kid Damien? I don't know. But anyway, the the baby, she thinks it was immaculate conception, and the baby is allegedly the Antichrist. And there is a lot of like, I don't want to say it was supernatural, but more like I'm trying to think of the right like heaven versus hell kind of war battle, which works in the Daredevil universe. Daredevil yeah. is an in and out Catholic, kind of depending on who is writing. Like the in Catholic- Hell's Kitchen. The Catholic angle is always there, whether or not he's a practicing Catholic, you know, kind of depends on who's there at the time. Which also is like up Kevin Smith's alley as also as a Catholic and and Dogma, the movie Dogma. Yeah, this came out like the same time as Dogma. I think mm-hmm. this is ninety it's ninety nine or ninety eight. I want to say ninety eight, I think is when this started. So yeah, that would have been right the exact same time the dogma was happening, the time when he's dealing with Catholicism and the entertainment world. So yeah, it's kind of perfect timing. It's also funny that he eventually has a cameo in the Daredevil movie too. Ah, oh, what a crap movie. But that was my one thing that was hard to read this and not think of the Daredevil movie. Well, what's funny is even within this collection, Affleck does a forward to it yeah. before he was cast as Daredevil. And Kevin Smith being in the same Daredevil movie. Figure yeah. that all out. The TV show is much better. At least season one. <laughs> season one's awesome. Season two is not it? So Daredevil... Defenders is... Mm-hmm. Daredevil's torn between this baby is evil and the Antichrist. We get some Natasha Romanoff in it as well. Oh, yeah. A- a- Daredevil and Black Widow. Apparently they were getting it on. Oh, they got it on a bunch in the seventies, baby. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, they used to date in the seventies. It was a big old thing. That's one of the because Black Widow wasn't doing that well as a solo character, so they teamed uh, her up with Daredevil to kind of like boost her visibility up, I guess. And they were a couple for a long period of time. Yeah, apparently. Fun so. facts. So a, a lot of different things happen along the way, and Matt Murdock, the man without fear, Daredevil, is torn between. What to do about this child? He even tries to throw it off the roof of a I building. Do like that. He's like, the Antichrist threw it away. Do you want me to spoil it for people? Or Go gonna... for it. Who cares? It came out in the late 90s. Yeah, so... If you haven't read it at this point, one, do it. B, who the hell cares? So really, Ball, or Bao, whoever is supposed to be like this demonic person, actually is Mysterio. There's a whole scene where it's like, I am dying because of all the gases I used and all my crimes. So I have like, I think it was like cancer or yeah, something. Yeah, Mysterio's dying of cancer. Yeah. And so he's like, so I just wanted to like, you know, have one last caper and, and have one of the superheroes kill me. But since Spider-Man's doing other stuff now. Yeah. I'm going to go for a guy that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. He's like, so for being a B-list villain, I'm going to go for a B-list hero to take me out. The series does a lot of things. I mean, they... The point of Daredevil, you know, being blind, like, the disability doesn't work if you don't treat it as a disability. If it's something that will, like, one, his other senses are higher, but he still has that one disability. And this book does do a good job of uh, taking advantage of that, of making Daredevil confused and out of the loop because he has the heightened senses and also because he has the blindness. So it does a good job of mixing that in, which some Daredevil stories don't do a great job of doing, of mixing, you know, the disability with the powers, which is a tough line to walk, but they do do it well in here. I mean, they deal with Catholicism uh, very directly. It involves a lot of classic Daredevil characters with, you know, Foggy and Bullseye is in there. And for the kind of second time in Daredevil's career, uh, the murder of a girlfriend. Yes. At the end, it kind of sets everything up for the movie a little bit. And like it explains.
explains why Matt Murdock is running a private practice because he decides he's going to start his own or restart his practice with. Oh my god, they've restarted that so many times. Yes, it well, doesn't even matter anymore. But I, I'm just trying to tie it in a little bit to the movie. I mean, yeah, Bullseye kills Karen Page though. This is the second girlfriend Bullseye has killed. He killed Electra with. Oof. I mean, the metaphor on it uh, is about as thinly veiled as it can be. He, you know, stabs her through the stomach with her own sigh. And it, look, it's a sexual violence thing. He kills her with sexual violence. I don't know what else to tell you. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not super subtle. But in this one, Bullseye kills another woman by, once again, penetrating her with a weapon. Same idea. Back to the overreaching <laughs> arc, though, of the story. But it's I, funny because... Daredevil's like talking to Mysterio. Like everything you did to me, like artificially inseminate somebody and you know set this web of lies. Like these are all things that have been done before. So the, near the end, it doesn't take itself too serious. And like, yeah, these are some like recycled comic tropes of things that have happened in the Marvel universe. What's funny about it though is Mysterio at the end ends up. I'm going to throw this in air quotes, killing himself because he's already dying of cancer. He just eats his yeah, own he gun. Just ends it, yeah. But it turns out, which is funny because Casada is doing this, who again would become editor in chief. I guess Kevin Smith didn't really clear that with anyone, like killing off a major Spider Man character villain in a non Spider Man book. Yeah. So he comes back like two months later in the books. He's like, eh, it was all an illusion. Mm, <laughs> because, of course. Mysterious gases. Yeah. But no, I, I really kind of enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting story. I think Kevin Smith is a very good storyteller. When he when he's able to do it the way he wants to do it, and he can really tell a nice, uh, he tells a really good story. It's a little stilted dialogue-wise, but not overly. I don't think it was so much that it kind of detracts from it. I like it. Uh, it's not, you know, Frank Miller quality Daredevil, but it's solid-ass Daredevil. If I was going to, you know, kind of pick like maybe top five Daredevil stories, this would probably fall in that range. Yeah, I was I was thoroughly entertained. It's got really good art. I think. I mean, that's Casada. Casada is amazing. I thought the art was really good. The splash covers, like the alternative covers, are really good too. But I, I just thought it was really well put together. And you know, there are long stretches where you're like, "What, what is going on here? What really is the thing?" And you kind of follow Matt Murdock on this cathartic journey to, like, you know, I mean, dealing with his own crisis of faith because he's literally yeah. like, "Do I have the Antichrist in my arms, or is it just a baby? And how do I deal with this?" And, and are all these bad things happening to me because of the baby? But they're being set up by Mysterio, and things work out for him at the end. Not for Foggy so much. Foggy gets screwed. Yeah. Oh, the baby gets a nice home. Good for the baby. Yes. I like this one. I think it's worth reading. I think, I mean, the last one that we did, the uh, Batman 66 book, I think is the best superhero book that Kevin Smith has done. But I think this is kind of second tier. I think it's better than his like main Batman stuff that we read. Uh, yeah. And, and I don't know as if much it's... as I like the Green Arrow stuff, I think this kind of trumps that as well. I think it's on par with the Green Arrow stuff. Yeah. Maybe a little bit better, but. The Green Arrow stuff kind of suffers from that second arc. It's not as interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is good. I think it's worth reading. But Guardian still, Devil, baby. But, Marvel Knights 20 years ago. I still want to see the end of that Batman arc, though. Yeah, we'll see. Where the hell are my notes? Underneath the book. Underneath it's multiple dust jackets. Yeah, now we go to letters to the editors. Now for my favorite part of the show. What did I say? Talk to the audience. Oh, God. This is always dead. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. If you could be a fictional character, who would you choose to be? The best version of myself. The, a man who doesn't just read condiments, but a man who reads full meals. Full, I will give you all the ingredients. He'll read a kid's cuisine meal right back at you. I don't think I want to read that. There's probably a lot of yellow 40 and orange dye and preservatives and... Uh, kids cuisine sucks. Unless you got the one with the brownie. If you got the one with the brownie, it wasn't that bad. I haven't had a microwave TV dinner in forever, and that's a good thing. You should be proud of yourself. I'm super proud of myself. All right. I made some dank ass food the other night. It was delicious. I also got some pork chops to grill up. I was going to grill them up tonight, but it's kind of late for that. So I made you mac and cheese. You did make me mac I and cheese. for you. I'm also hungry again. So tomorrow night will be pork chop night. Well okay. seasoned Fictional pork chops. character. <sighs> I almost said Doug, like Doug funny, because I just said pork chop. Patty Mayonnaise. She blue? I don't remember. It's been... No, Skeeter was blue. His friend Skeeter was blue. Okay. Fictional character. I didn't think about this. I should have. Yeah, you really didn't do a good job. You didn't do a good... You have an answer. What's your answer? I'm thinking right now. Du your you... answer was Doug. Your Doug. answer sucks. I don't want to be Doug. Quail Man, dude. Come on. What's wrong with that? If I could be any fictional character, who would I be? Okay, I'm going to have a character you don't know. Okay. I would say Nighthawk. 
He is a Marvel character. Okay. Why would I say Nighthawk, you ask? That why would you say <laughs> Nighthawk, I ask? <laughs> because he's really kind of lazy, doesn't do that much. He doesn't really have his own rogues like gallery, but he's a billionaire, owns a company, and has a super suit that can make him fly and shoot lasers. But he doesn't really try that hard. But he still has billions of dollars. It's kind of like discount Iron Man. Yeah, he is. Iron Man that doesn't try. A less alcoholic <laughs> Iron Man? Yeah. Okay. He used to be a villain, then he became a hero, and he honestly just doesn't try that hard. But he's still a billionaire, and he's never really in that much risk because he's so low grade that he could just kind of fly under the radar, but also still fly with his super suit and his billions. I, Nighthawk, baby! I almost want to say I'd want to be Gordon Bombay. Okay. Coach from the Mighty Ducks. I know who it is. Yeah. Mine is probably like the drunk driving charge. Did that happen? I don't remember that. Yeah, that's how he ended up coaching the Mighty Ducks in the first place, community oh. service. He was a really rich lawyer, got wasted, drove home, got in an accident because he was a really rich, powerful lawyer in a powerful firm. They got him to only have to do uh, community service, and that was coaching a hockey team. But then he gets to, like, to live out his dream and, Boy, and play. I don't play. remember that part of the story, but sure, I believe you. Yeah, then he gets to play, you know, live out his dream and play professional hockey. Then he gets injured and kind of goes back and finds himself. It's kind of a neat little... And then he becomes a lawyer again, but... So you want to get caught drinking and driving? And no, no. That's why I said I <laughs> almost want to say Gordon Bombay, but I really, you know, no. I love to drink and drive. Uh, absolutely not. Good message for the kids. Yeah, man. I don't know. There's like, there's so many answers I want to give. Or like, oh, that's such a cliche answer. Like, oh yeah, everyone kind of would give an answer like that. I don't care. Who the hell cares? Answer however you feel like. I would want to be. Tom Brady. Now, he's not fictional, isn't he? He's got a story. Just because he has a storybook life doesn't make him fictional. <laughs> hmm. I kind of would like to be Professor X. You like to send children into a child war. You're right, and to be crushed from the spine by a demon. And also, sometimes you lust after teenagers. Let's cut that. <laughs> I'm not cutting that. That's what he did. He's done those things. I didn't know those things about <laughs> Professor X. I no longer want to be him <laughs> like, at that, all. That paralyzed thing in Child War, that's not great. Casey Jones. It'd be fun to be Casey Jones. Yeah, he doesn't really have any bad. <laughs> he has a kind of a crappy brother, but he just likes action movies and punching things in the face. Worst things have happened. Yeah. It wouldn't be bad to be Casey Jones. I'm trying to think of like other fictional characters that would be really cool to be. <laughs> Everyone's parents are dead. Or their like planet explodes or something. Yeah, it's no fun to be like Superman. <laughs> That's or... why I chose Nighthawk. Lazy billionaire who's still a superhero. I guess you know, there's something to be said about being being Thor. It'd be kinda cool to be Thor. Live forever, get to spend the first couple thousand years of your life just drinking heavily and banging maidens. Thor it is. <laughs> and then he could get to have some flying goats called like Tooth Nasher and I forget the other one. Yep, I want to be Thor. And then you get a special hammer, and then one day you're king, and you lo- but you have to lose an eye and an arm, but you still get to be king. I am all about being Thor then. <laughs> a small price to pay. Look, I like that drunken mead thing in the Maidens in Viking times. Mm, yes. And f- riding around on flying goats. Being very Norse mythologic i guess um the goats are apparently from norse mythology but something that you don't see in the books versus like the oh like the 80th time this evening air quotes the real norse myths is that apparently he has he eats the goats every single night and by the morning they regenerate oh, that's I very book, convenient but i don't think the books have ever have you ever had that. goat not to my knowledge i've had like goat milk and goat cheese wouldn't goat be similar to lamb Lamb is delicious. Lamb is fantastic. Shave that lamb. I love some shaved lamb. Get it all in my mouth. All right. Uh, <laughs> if you like the show. You can Why? Go to, that's just awkward sounding. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash editors note comics where you for a dollar a month. You can get this show a week early in the Buffy back issue. Been the other show, which I understand is recording later on tonight. We're really doing that next. Uh, you'll get that show a whole uh, week early. And then there's going to be another one in a week or two. I don't I haven't decided yet. And if you throw a little more cheddar our way, like $5, you can be a Duke or Duchess of the podcast. And you also get exclusive content by Zach, the week's top, uh, top comics out, his reviews, and uh, all that good stuff. True story. That's a thing I do every week. Yes. That was me. I uh, have an email. Oh, is, is it a letter to the editors? I, don't know, I can check. Well, save it for next week. By the way, send us some more letters to the editors. Uh, we really appreciate your input, your thoughts. I'd love to do another mailbag show. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't done one in a while. So send us your deepest, darkest questions. Uh-oh. What are you chuckling about? Oh, no. <laughs> Just ask Jared about his personal life. New segment on the show. What's Jared's dating life? 
And that's the extent <laughs> of the right there. Uh, if you want to go to the store, uh, 210 Water Street in Hollowell, you can also find Parking's Zach. Parking's fine. Parking is fine. Plus, you're on all the uh, social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Especially on iTunes. To our show, especially on iTunes. And especially on Patreon. That's where the cheddar is. The cheddar. You know, I was talking to um, our sound guy. Yeah. And he was telling me that, um, because I guess he's been doing a thing on like a local AM station for like horse racing or something. Really? And he was telling me. Off track betting? He he was telling me the numbers of what they get him like, because I feel pretty good about our numbers. Like we have grown 100% in the last six months, which is great. And we're, you know, have a nice upward trajectory. But he told me the numbers of AM radio and Skowhegan. Oh, it's big. It's double our numbers. I'm like, son of a bitch. AM radio beats us out by that much? Yes. As ah, a matter of fact, they damn do. Damn it. I guess tell a friend, because I want to beat local AM radio. <laughs> yes. Help us out. That's what I want now. I'm all about just beating AM radio. Amplitude uh, Modulation Radio. And you're on... Cool. You're on Twitter. Yes, at Junior Rich. If you want to see how the Patriots are doing live. Oh, he'll tell you. Oh, I'll give you my, I'll give you my, my thoughts. If you want to have a... Sports reports right at your fingertips. Don't come to me. <laughs> did did you say your Twitter handle? At Junior Rich. I don't even know if you said it. I did. There That's it is. the second it's time like, I said right, it. Yeah. We're, we're really beating it into the ground now. More well, Kevin we, Smith next week. Yeah, we'll be back it. next week for a bad one. We're back for a bad one next week, baby. It's not any good, but we're going to talk about it. Woo! But really, he's gonna. That doesn't get people to want to listen next week. Oh, they're talking about some crap. <laughs> listen to Zach rail on stuff next week on the show. Uh, it's all about. It's the back to school edition of the show, and it's all about sexual violence. Woo! Oh, depressed. So we'll be back. Kevin Smithathon. What is wrong Con- with you? Ten years or concludes. It's one of those ones. I didn't write it. Well, there's like two things it could. It could it could continue or it could end. So yeah, you really narrowed it down I, I don't there. Rem- I think it you ends. really put a fine point on it. I think it ends next it's week. I think stupid it ends. Adult. Kevin Smithathon ends next week. So doesn't your big bushy hair too? Doesn't it? I'm getting a haircut. Yeah, I'm oh. all I'm all curly right now. A little little uh, aggressive mane there. Yeah. Whatever. Next week, baby. Bye.